This week, can one dealership chain solve the problem with waiting for weeks and weeks to get your RV fixed? Bish's RV has set out to do it and they think they can. We interview Chris Blanchard with Bish's to find out about their new Bish Fix program and how they're trying to keep your RV out of RV jail so that you have the ability to camp more longer. Plus, is it time to normalize not having campfires? We'll get into that more. This is RV Miles. Welcome to episode number 324 of the RV Miles podcast. I'm Jason, and I'm all by myself this week. Abby is taking the week off. Uh, We both took last week off. As some of you know, we've shared on social media, and I talked about it in the last news video. We've had sort of a a difficult time over the last couple weeks, Uh, first of all, which seems totally insignificant now. uh, Our entire family got really sick uh, over the course of a week one after another of us just really got very, very ill to the point where um, our throats were very sore and talking was not really an option. So we were taking a week off anyway, and uh, gosh, that seems a a lifetime ago at this point because now uh, what we're doing is grieving. We, uh, We have a great friend who we lost recently to a hit and run driver. Our friend Beck Pennington, who's a back home friend of Abby's from the Kansas City area. Abby's known her for over 30 years. I feel like I've known her as long, but I've only known her for 16 or 17. Uh, Beck was out on a walk in her neighborhood picking up trash from the roadside. And she was struck by a hit and run driver um, and uh, who's now been caught and and is being charged and all that. Uh, But Beck went to the hospital um, with severe head trauma, and Abby rushed to Kansas City to be with her and her husband and her three children and uh, all of of their friends and family. And uh, she didn't make it. Uh, They had to pull the plug on, uh, on last Friday, But as an organ donor, she's already saved the lives of four people. So there's at least a small silver lining to a a really sad cloud that's been hanging over our family for the last several days. So Abby isn't totally comfortable getting on camera yet uh, or on a microphone, and I don't blame her. It's it's a challenge to be able to talk about these things and at least... um, you know, me being not a childhood friend of hers, I'm a little bit more removed from it. So I'm, I'm a little bit more comfortable being able to talk about it. But it's it's just heartbreaking to think about um, somebody that we've lost way, way too early. If you want to know uh, what we're doing to help the family, you can head over to rvmiles.com slash Beck, B-E-C. And, uh, and maybe you can throw in a few bucks to help uh, support her family through this very, very tough time. So um, thanks for your patience in in waiting for some of our content to get out. We took a week off of uh, the RV Miles podcast. We took a week off of America's National Parks, and we're just sort of getting back into the swing of things as we get ready to hit the road in a week and a day from when I'm recording this. So we are hitting the road uh, the Friday after Independence Day to head on to Charlottesville, Virginia, Jack is starting his uh, his film camp, so we're going to be there for two weeks, and then we're going to be working our way south in the middle of the summer uh, down to Florida, going through some great destinations on the way, like Cape Hatteras and, and other places. I'm very excited about some of the places that we get to visit. I'm very excited about getting back on the road and camping again, but through everything that's been going on with us in the last couple of weeks we are so far behind from where we intended to be. The idea was that we would get a bunch of podcasts recorded ahead of time and and get things out and get things ready so that we wouldn't have to do as much recording on the road as we uh, as I think we're going to have to do now. So that's unfortunate, but it is what it is um, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, none of it matters compared to 
you know, the loss of a life. So, so all that said, I am excited about today's show though. We have Chris Blanchard on from Bish's RV. Believe it or not, there are some good dealerships out there that are really trying to make a difference. I think it might be surprising to a lot of folks to know that most of the people in the RV industry know and understand the struggles that customers have within the RV industry. You know, maybe their higher ups, the very top brass aren't giving them the resources and the funding to solve some of the problems that we all have with service and with RV quality and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, some are. I mean, I think I've said this many times that I think this is a time now that the RV industry is retracting, that we're going to see that extreme competition filter in where different dealerships and different RV manufacturers are working harder to win your dollars where they didn't have to a couple years ago. Ambitious is a chain of dealerships, a small chain, not very big, uh, but it's a chain of dealerships that is strong and is trying to find ways to get rid of that repair event cycle time, the amount of time it takes between when you drop your RV off to get fixed to when it actually gets fixed. They're trying to minimize that. And I think uh, what they're talking about doing and what they're working on sounds really great. So I'm going to get to that interview in a minute. But first, I wanted to read to you a email that we got from a listener from Penelope. Fires are in some amazing places right now. Twin Lakes, Colorado, below Independence Pass. This was 10 days ago, by the way, this email came through. Um, Twin Lakes, Colorado, below Independence Pass, started by a campfire that was left to smolder and not put dead out. A fire burns at Rodoso in a drought-ridden New Mexico. I don't know the cause. There are more. Living in Boulder since 1999, I've lost count of the number of wildfires we've seen from our house. Most have been human-caused, and all have been increased by the impacts of climate change. From the hot, dry air to the extended droughts to the pine beetles that won't die when the winters aren't cold enough for long enough. How about we normalize not having campfires? I used to smell wood smoke and inhale the remembrance of growing up with wood stoves as our primary heat source on Whidbey Island in Washington. Now I smell wood smoke and my first thought is worry and I try to find the source and turn to news outlets. We think of our RV as an escape vehicle and keep it mostly ready to go. We've not been evacuated ever, not yet. So many friends have been evacuated multiple times and some have lost everything. Friends have had five minutes to flee the Marshall's fire, which I could see from our house. I know solo stoves and others are likely safer than campfire rings, but embers are embers. The risk is real and so frightening to us, especially to those of us in the West and Mountain West. On the camping safety side, just like we check for and have awareness of the location of the nearest exits on an airplane and public spaces, it's good for folks to have a mental model of escape routes for where they camp, including the tornado and windstorm shelters mentioned in a recent podcast, but also how to drive to safety. And it's good to have a weather radio such as a Midland that can do double duty as handheld radio, but also with a weather band. And know what county you're in. It's sometimes difficult to understand emergency alerts if you're not familiar with an area. Thanks so much, Penelope, for sending this in. I, campfires are are something that, you know, I love a good campfire. I, I always have. There's something that we've had less and less of over the years. And there's many reasons to that. I, I, I think one of the biggest reasons, though, is the amount of time that we've spent in the West. You know, Penelope mentioned that so many wildfires are human caused. I believe the number is about 80% right now of wildfires are human caused. So we know that wildfires are a normal, natural phenomenon in the wilderness, uh, but they're usually started by lightning. And what proceeds or comes after lightning is usually rain. Wildfires tend to happen naturally through the wet season and they don't tend to be so big. Human-caused wildfires happen from things like campfires. They happen from things like uh, trailer chains dragging. That's been a very common problem, actually. Trailer chains dragging and causing sparks or frozen brakes on a trailer heating up and causing a fire. There have been lots of issues like that. When I say 80% are human-caused, a lot of those wildfires are caused by 
electrical transformers blowing, things like that, which would be considered a human cause. But there are things that we do that are dangerous, including campfires. And in wildfire areas, gosh, I just don't see the need for campfires. I, I know, you know, there are fire restrictions and uh, and they go so far and I, I, I people ignore them sometimes and and that's really unfortunate. Um, so part of knowing what county you're in and and all that sort of stuff is knowing what the fire restrictions are in the area that you're in. But I just received a press release. It was weird that this this email came through because I received a press release for an item that is one of the most ridiculous things that I've ever seen. So this is a collapsible camping torch that's meant to replace a campfire. Uh, it's essentially, I'll do my best to describe it here. If you're watching this, you can see an image of it. I'll put up on the screen, but uh, this is like a propane fire pit, but it's a, a tripod about a foot off the ground. And it's got three fins that come out of the top of it. And it it, it basically is a a floating open fire in the air, like a foot off the ground that has a tail in this photo. It's got about a three foot tail on it and depending on which way the wind blows. And this is, you know, something it's, it's, it's like a propane fire pit, but it's not surrounded by a ring. It doesn't have the rocks. It's just, it, it's just fire blaring into the open space. And what's crazy about something like this is it meets stage one and stage two wildfire restrictions because it has a shutoff, because you can turn it off. So when you're in a stage one or stage two wildfire restriction, not stage three, you can usually, and this depends on the, the actual given uh, restrictions, so read them and know, you can usually use things like a camp stove. And the way the laws are written is if it's a propane or gas-fueled fire that you can turn off, you can use it. And generally the idea is meant that you can use it for cooking, not that we're going to have this giant flame. I mean, giant flame in the open air that could knock over or whatever and, and light something on fire. I mean, I guess at least something like this doesn't have embers. But I, I, there, there are so many reasons that campfires uh, are, are challenging lately. And, and yeah, one of them is is climate change. And whether whatever you want to argue uh, are the reasons for climate change, it is we have been going through some severe droughts, right? We we have experienced these problems with these pine beetles not dying over the winter and killing so many trees. And those trees that have been killed are fuel. So there are lots more problems with wildfires in the last few years than there have been over the last few decades. So for my money, having a campfire in areas where it's not wet, just isn't necessary. Maybe you use one for cooking, but a cooking fire is very small, right? A cooking fire isn't what most of us consider a campfire to hang out around. Um, you know, in the East where we don't tend to have wildfires very much and the vegetation is lush and wet, maybe it doesn't matter so much. And I'm still happy to have a campfire in those places. But I also think often about people who struggle with with issues with smoke inhalation. I know so many people now that have severe issues with smoke. Abby is one of them. Abby loves a good campfire. And this is why we use a smoke, a solo stove because it doesn't, it doesn't give off a whole lot of smoke. They truly are very low smoke fires. And I do think they are much safer uh, because they burn the wood a lot more efficiently. There's, there are less sparks and there are less embers and you can get lids for them and all sorts of stuff. But I, we have fewer fires because of her extreme aversion to smoke. And a lot of people have that. And I cringe, I cringe every time I see somebody post somewhere online about how they make smoky campfires on purpose to keep the bugs away. Maybe if you're in the middle of nowhere camping, if you're at a campground, whether a private or a state or public campground where you're near other people and you are purposefully making your campfire as smoky as possible to keep bugs away, which first of all, doesn't work. I'm sorry to say. You might think it works. You might feel like it's working. It's not working. How inconsiderate could you be 
to be smoking out an entire campground because you feel that you need more smoke. Campfires, as camping has exploded, have become more and more problematic. Let's just be honest. And again, I love them. I think they have a time and a place. And I think people need to be more uh, understanding of the safeties and the dangers and be more considerate of other folks out there and know when is appropriate time to have a campfire, when the wood is good enough to have a campfire. You know, are you trying too hard to make wet wood work? If it's not working, it's not working. Give it up. And too many people burning their trash in campfires, too many people leaving hot embers, leaving their site, uh, leaving their campfire to go out while they're not supervising it. They go to bed while the fire burns itself out. There's so much like that happening. Um, and again, this has always happened, but we've been going through these severe periods of drought. We've We've had so many issues with wildfires in the last few years. And we have so many more people camping that maybe this is something that we need to look at. Not saying we need to ban campfires, but let's all be a little bit more reasonable and let's normalize going to a campground and not having a campfire and finding other ways to enjoy ourselves because you don't need a campfire. I mean, it's one of the biggest things I, I learned in full-time RVing is that many people like my relatives and friends and family from back home thought every night we spent in the outdoors was around a campfire. But the reality of full-time RVing was that that was just an occasional fun thing that we did. And I think it will just be an occasional fun thing that we do going forward and doesn't need to be a daily part of our campground life and only in the appropriate situations when it's appropriate and when we can do it responsibly. So that's my thought on what Penelope has to say. I'd love to know your comments in the YouTube version of this video or on any of the social media posts related to this episode. So thanks so much for doing that, if you can. In a moment, we're going to have our interview with Chris Blanchard of Bish's RV. Be right back. Chances are you've seen them on the road. That's because Blue Ox designs and manufactures the best towing products in the industry. Just look around. You'll find them on highways and campgrounds and anywhere you find people traveling in the great outdoors. Award-winning tow bars, base plates, and brakes. A full line of weight distributing hitches. Adjustable ball mounts and a new line of fifth wheel hitches. With Blue Ox, towing doesn't have to be a drag. To learn more about how Blue Ox can make your travel adventures even more stress-free, visit BlueOx.com. RV Miles is sponsored by Harvest Hosts. Harvest Hosts is a membership that allows RVers to take a rest from the road and enjoy unlimited overnight stays at over 5,100 unique locations in North America. Breweries, farms, attractions, wineries, and more. Easily plan and book your next RV trip and enjoy over $1,500 in exclusive member benefits by joining Harvest Host. Get 15% off your first year of membership with the code MILES. That's M-I-L-E-S. Go to harvesthost.com to become a Harvest Host member today. So RV service is a big challenge for lots of folks who are traveling in their units. They're trying to figure out how to solve a problem when they're out camping on the road or they're getting ready for the summer travel season and all of a sudden there's a problem and they're faced with bringing it to a dealership and waiting months for it to get fixed. It's been a real big concern for a lot of RVers out there, I know for sure. There's one dealership chain, though, that's trying to make some fixes, trying to solve some of those pain points that folks are dealing with, and that's Bish's. Bish is a chain of 22 dealerships across the country, so not a big chain, a, 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 nice, <laughs> a nice size, but lots of locations for you to visit across the country. Today, we have Chris Blanchard on from Bish's RV to talk about a new program they have called Bish Fix that hopefully will help solve some of the issues that folks have in getting service on their RV. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, Chris, what are what are some of the what what is the situation right now for somebody who say they they are getting ready for traveling for the summer for the first time right now? They've just dewinterized and stuff, and they all of a sudden discover. Uh, there's a problem. There's something that isn't working. Their stove isn't working. What is the situation right now for a person like that who wants to get that fixed industry-wide, not necessarily at 
uh, a business dealership? Yeah, the the industry statistics are are going to tell you that it's going to probably take you about thirty days on average to get that fixed. Um, if you if you require new parts or if you require warranty, that that time can go up to like ninety seven days on average. So um, you take it out Memorial Day weekend, you find out the stove isn't working, your camping season is basically done. Wow. If that stove is required for you to go camping, you might be able mm-hmm. to go camping without it. But pretty good chance it's going to be sitting on a sitting on a dealer's lot, waiting for a part to get to come in, waiting for warranty to get approved, and then waiting for it to get fixed. But yeah, you're going to lose probably 90 days of camping. So that's part of the thing too. You you got to bring it into a dealer. They look at it, diagnose the problem, contact the manufacturer of the RV or of of the part, and get warranty approval, and then it sits at their lot while you wait for that part to come in, right? Yes, a lot of, a lot of waiting. Um, generally, though, you're going to call a dealership, and this time of year especially, you're, you're probably not even going to be able to have an appointment to drop it off for a couple weeks. Um, and that, that clock that I mentioned, the, the 30-something day average and 97 if you need parts and warranty, um, that's after it lands at the dealership's lot. That doesn't count the two to three to four weeks that it takes just to get your appointment. Yeah, so you have an appointment to drop it off, which might be yep. two or three weeks away from today. And then they got to look at it, which might not be that day, might be a couple more weeks. And then they got to go through the whole process of ordering the part, talking to the manufacturer, all that sort of stuff. Yep, correct. So Bishes has identified this as a problem. And I, I big credit to Bishes. Bishes, if you don't know, uh, about Bishes. You might be familiar with them through our buddy Josh, the RV nerd, who's been on the podcast several times, is sort of the face on YouTube of, of Bishes. They are very open and honest about a lot of the things going on in the industry, problems that they have at their dealerships, uh, problems that different RVs have. And they're they're very good, not just in Josh's videos, but I've noticed really on social media in general about being very forthwith about some of the issues facing the RV industry. So y'all have set out to uh, to build a new program for not just your buyers, but for anybody eventually to get some of these problems fixed in a more reasonable manner. Tell us about Bishfix. Yeah, so Bishfix really is, is there to solve that problem. Um, you know, we, I think it was a year and a half ago, um, so every dealership has like a dealer management software that, that they use, they call it a DMS and we use Evo Lightspeed and they had a, they had a big conference where they, they track the repair event cycle time. That's that amount of time it takes to get it fixed. Um, and they had a big conference where they gave out awards to their top, top dealers. Right. And we were in the top five. They don't do a number one, two, three, four, five. They just say you're top five or you're not. And so, we won that uh, top five award and we were frankly pretty embarrassed because our numbers are better than the industry average, but not much. And so it's like, okay, the industry did it in 30, we did it in 25. We're actually pretty embarrassed of that. And we weren't real excited to receive that award because, hey, you're average, good job, right? So um, that kind of fueled our, our fire a little bit, but really what, what Bishfix is, is it starts with a, um, video phone call with a master certified technician. Um, we we only bring in the absolute best technicians that we that we know that we have you know connections with, um, and it starts with a video call with them. We use a, a particular software um, that's similar to like FaceTime, right? But it allows you to uh, see and control the customer's camera. So our our technicians are are looking at their computer screen looking through the customer's camera, they can turn on lights, they can take pictures, they can start recording, stop recording, they can zoom in, they can zoom out. Um, and these these technicians, what they're trying to do is diagnose the problem over the phone. Um, and what we found is 45% of the time right now, we actually fix the RV over the phone. So customer never actually even has to bring it in. Whereas historically, customer would call a dealership, set up an appointment, wait two weeks, go drop it off. They do a diagnosis, realize that it was just a customer error or all they had to do is flip this switch or they did something out of order. Um, and now the customer in under 30 minutes finds out 
oh, all you got to do is tighten the screw and, and it works or reach underneath this thing and pull on this little lever and suddenly it works again. Um, so for almost half the customers who are calling in, they actually are fixed back on the road camping. So, um, and when we look at our own, our own numbers and how we track and stuff, we don't even count those people, even though they would have gone into a dealership um, and probably would have taken two, three, four days to get the diagnosis done. And um, so after they call in, they do that uh, video call, we then start the processing of warranty and parts. So before the customer even comes in and drops off their RV, we've already got parts on order. We've got warranty authorization submitted. And then we set up an appointment with the customer on the day that they can drop it off for it to get fixed instead of the day that they can drop it off to get diagnosed. So then a customer, so parts are on order, warranty submitted. Um, when we have a, a ETA on the parts arrival, let's say it's June 15th, we'll go ahead and set the appointment for June 17th. And now customer comes in, drops it off, and we fix the RV in a couple hours and the customer has it back ideally the same day. Um, we don't, we don't make any promises that it is always going to be same day. We, we still have some of the same issues and challenges as any other dealer, but that's our, that's what we're, um, we're pushing for. We, we want to be able to provide same day service. Um, most of the time we're able to get that done in under three days. Um, and then after that, we, we still have a significant number. It's about 15%, um, that go into what we call RV jail, where they're going to be stuck in there for 30 days, 40 days, 60 days, because of whatever reason, right? Maybe we bring it in. Um, we got the parts on order. It comes and arrives at the dealership and the wrong part got ordered. So now it's going to sit there until we get the right part ordered and brought in, or we start tearing it down and the guy who diagnosed it over the phone missed something. And so we got to get a different part or a different thing authorized. And so, um, although we're not perfect, we're seeing significant improvements in that repair event cycle time where, um, you know, 85% of the time it's done in under three days and 15% of the time it, it takes longer. Uh, but, but that's what we're striving for. We're striving for that same day service so that by the time a customer drops it off, parts are there, work is authorized in and out the same day. It seems kind of obvious. I mean, you're, you're all, right off the bat, you're saving several weeks of just the diagnosing the problem, whether that's something that's in that 45% that somebody can, fix on their own right away, or it's something that you're going to need to bring in. At least you know what's going on and you can tell the customer if it's safe and all that sort of stuff. It seems like it, it actually makes things a lot easier on your end too, where you don't have to have RVs sitting on the lot. You have a lot better idea of how to schedule your technicians, where they're going to be on a certain day. And it's, it's not everything's up in the air for, for both ends. Yeah, exactly. I, I was at our Meridian dealership uh, just the other day, and it was like, it blew me away how many fewer service RVs we had in our service shop because we just didn't, we didn't have RVs just parked out in front waiting for parts to get there. It was like, no, if an RV was out there, it's because it was coming in for service within a day or so uh, to get fixed. We, they, they're not sitting on our lot anymore for two, three, four weeks, two, three, four months. Uh, waiting to get fixed and so um, the amount of parking we have in our parking lot was just significantly higher because we didn't have all those rvs just plugging it up so this isn't uh this isn't just something that is immediately available to anybody it's a program that folks have to join so talk to us about how you get into bish fix what's the cost and all that sort of stuff yeah so right now every customer who buys an rv from bishes gets one year free of bish fix so um and then any customer who's ever bought from bishes so whether it was 10 years ago or five years ago, like if, as long as you still own that RV you bought from us, um, we automatically enrolled them into a year free of Bish Fix. So if you bought it three years ago and you call up and say, uh, hey, we've I, I've got a problem. Great. You're within your one free, one year free window. Um, we go ahead and take care of you. Um, after that, right now we have some introductory pricing running. It's $4.99 a month after that first year. We don't have... We don't have any paying customers right now because everybody is still within their within their first year. That clock kind of started first part of January, so um, all of our old time customers have another six months. If, if you buy today, then you're good until June of next year. So 
Um, but yeah, kind of our introductory pricing right now, it's $4.99 a month after that one year renewal. Uh, if you're a non-vicious customer, uh, you bought from Camping World, or you bought from Journal RV, or you bought from um, mom and pop shop down the road, uh, for those customers, if they call, so if you call our dealership, you get automatically rerouted through Bishfix. You, you, you don't even call the dealership anymore. It just goes straight to our Bishfix team. Um, so if, if you call and you hadn't bought from us, we, we do charge like a, a one-time fee if they want us to go ahead and do a diagnosis and, and do that process. And it's $79 for, for, for those people. Um, but if they want to then sign up to be a Bishfix member, they just go on a wait list at this point. Um, as we build out capacity, as we add more technicians, as we add more uh, support staff, you know, then we will um, call people on that wait list and allow them to sign up. If you don't buy from Bishes, then the price is double. So Bishes members, first year is free, and then you get half price on Bish Fix forever. If you didn't buy from Bishes, then that, that price is just double. Okay, so folks, at this point, if they didn't buy from Bishes, they can't. They can just join a waiting list, and eventually they'll be able to get in once you've built the team out a little bit more. But in the future, anybody will be able to like go on the website and join if they want. Yeah, and again, if if someone that's a non vicious customer calls today, right, we'll kind of talk them through the process, give them an opportunity, like, hey, if you want us to do this for you and expedite your parts ordering and expedite the the warranty approvals and stuff, it's a, a seventy nine. 99 uh, charge at that time and and then we'll go ahead and do the diagnosis and you know kind of speed up that process and for a lot of customers it's actually i mean 50 percent of the time almost 50 percent of the time you're actually never gonna have to bring it in we'll just get you taken care of and fixed and um where normally that would be a 200 dollars diagnostic fee at a service center you just did it for 80 bucks and didn't have to bring in your rv so even for those customers there's still quite a bit of value there is there any thought in the future about maybe bringing mobile technicians into the fold? Yeah, so we actually do utilize mobile technicians right now. Um, so if uh, a customer from Florida decides to buy from us, right, they go to our Indiana dealership and they buy from us or our Virginia dealership and they buy from us um, and they're down in Florida or, they're, or maybe they're from Virginia and they're camping in Florida, right, and something goes wrong and breaks and they're at the campsite, um, We'll do that that same video conference call with them. And if we determine that um, we can fix it at the site, wherever they're at, whether it's their house or campsite, then we go out and we find a mobile technician that we can send to their house. Um, I think I think right now we've got 150 or so mobile technicians that we have used. Um, we don't have we're not going into like Dallas, Texas right now and trying to build out a mobile network. But if we have a customer in Dallas, that has an issue and they're not close to our one of our dealerships then we have we have a team of people who go out and find a mobile technician in the area um, and as long as they do good work now they're kind of a preferred mobile technician so the next time a customer in dallas has an issue we call them up and send them to the to the site so just to be clear so folks if, if they enroll in in bishfix if they're a member of bishfix they're still going to if, if they're getting their rv repaired at your shop they're still going to be paying like the hourly rates uh to get that work done if it's not under warranty right um but this is just this is a much more expedited way of getting diagnostics done and allowing them to still have their rv as much as possible and shorten that whole time that that people have to worry about not having their RV uh, and and being away from it while they're while it's the prime camping season. Yeah, really, that's what you're paying for is you're paying for more more days camping. Really, um, you know, you're, you're paying so that there's a 50 percent chance that you don't even have to bring it into a shop, right? You call in and oh, yeah, no, it's not broken. Just do this, do this, do this. Or it is broken. But if you've got a screwdriver and a hammer, we can get you we can get you fixed and you don't even have to bring it in. So yeah, you're, you're paying for more days camping because you have a, if something is wrong, an expedited process and a chance that you get fixed over the phone. Well, until it's available to the, the public as a whole, it's a really compelling reason to check out a Bish's dealership if you're looking to buy an RV anytime in the near future. Chris, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Jason. 
More in a moment, but first, this video is sponsored by RV Life Pro. The RV lifestyle is about community, and the RV community is at the heart of RV Life. RV Life recently celebrated the one millionth trip planned with RV Life Trip Wizard, their excellent trip planning tool for RVers. Featuring all the trusted reviews, pictures, and tips from their RV Life campground site, Trip Wizard is often discussed on another long-term RV Life community, irv2.com. RV Life also features several blog sites and over 20 additional RVing forums to serve the RV community. All of this experience and community feedback come together to help create a fantastic RV trip planner and mobile navigation tool collectively called RV Life Pro. RV Life also marked a milestone of over 3 billion miles traveled using RV Life Pro, counting both the planned RV trips and ad hoc navigation with the included RV Safe mobile app. Take 25% off of RV Life Pro with the coupon code RV Miles. Visit RVLife.com and get 25% off with code RV Miles. RVMattress.com by Brooklyn Bedding provides real mattresses to fit in all those odd sizes that RV manufacturers make from the RV King and RV Queen to that kind of skinny king that's not a true width king to all the weird bunk sizes and all that sort of stuff. Different thicknesses. If you have a slide that closes over the top of your mattress, RVmattress.com has a mattress for you. They offer a 120-night sleep trial. Their mattresses are toxin-free. They come from their factory in Arizona, shipped to anywhere. You can ship them to a campground if you want to. They come rolled up, vacuum sealed. You just open them up and let them expand, and they even have hybrid mattresses that include springs inside. They're real mattresses from a real mattress company, not the piece of junk foam that came with most RVs. You can get 25% off a mattress from rvmattress.com slash rvmiles using the code RV miles. That's rvmattress.com slash RV miles and use the code RV miles at checkout to get 25% off your next mattress purchase. Thanks so much to rvmattress.com and Brooklyn Bedding for supporting this channel and for supporting so many different RV channels out there. It really makes a difference in the content that we're able to bring to you. It's time to check the level of our tank sponsored by liquefied RV toilet treatment. The no BS toilet treatment, claim your free bottle they're no longer giving away free bottles, but you can get a free bottle with purchase. They've gone through the 10,000 free bottles, but you can get a free bottle with purchase now. If you go to liquefiedrv.com slash free bottle, people are loving liquefied. Check it out. It's it's really actually a fantastic product that actually works. Um, check it out over at liquefiedrv.com slash free bottle. You can also get it on amazon.com and we'll have a link in the description. My black tank this week is New Mexico State Parks. So I talked about this on a news video several weeks ago, and I talked about this uh, on the RV Miles podcast as well. Um, some changes coming, uh, proposed changes coming to the New Mexico State Parks, the cost of camping and the cost of the day pass and the cost of the annual pass. New Mexico used to be one of our favorite states to camp in, still is, uh, but primarily because the super affordable, and this is part of the problem and I get it, the super affordable annual camping pass last, I think right now it's $220 for a non-New Mexico resident to get, or it's a hundred, it's 180 for a New Mexico resident. And this pass allows you to camp for free at any of the no hookup sites, which New Mexico is actually one of the rare states that has more no hookup sites than they have hookup sites. And then it would be an additional $4 if you were in an electric site. So it was an incredible deal. That is, uh, the proposal has been to remove that pass. They've come up with a new proposal after hearing a lot of the feedback from people uh, and decided on some new changes to both the camping costs, but also the these passes. So currently developed camping for a resident in New Mexico is $10 per vehicle. The plan is to bring that up to $15 per vehicle. Uh, so that's just the base campsite without water or electric. A developed campsite for a non-resident is currently $10 and that's gonna go up to $20 per vehicle. On top of that, you're gonna pay $5 per day for a water hookup, $10 a day for an electric hookup and $5 per day for a sewer hookup. So for an out-of-state resident, for a full hookup campsite, 
all in, you're looking at $40 a night, which is right in line with other state parks across the country. I don't begrudge them that for a full hookup campsite. Um, but the, the annual pass, holy cow. Uh, so the resident annual pass is going to go up from $180 to $300 per year. Now, of course, it's still one of the only states that has a pass like this that gives you the ability to pay $300 and then be able to camp for free as much as you want or pay on top of that a hookup fee. So you, if you're doing electric, you're going to pay $10 a, a day on top of that. But what's crazy here is the annual camping pass for non-residents. It's going to go up to $600 a year on this proposal. What I don't understand about this, this proposal is that it, it shows the estimated revenue impact, what they think they're going to make off of these increases. So jumping that rate up to $600 a year, they think that'll make them a, an additional $310,000 a year on top of the resident pass that they think will make them an additional $98,000 a year. I don't think anybody's going to buy this $600 pass. I don't think there's much of a benefit for it because remember it's $600 plus the hookup costs per night, plus a reservation fee for night. They also charge you like a $4 per night reservation fee if you're reserving in it in advance. Um, and I, I, I just think this is a little bit out of the realm of reality. And I think it's really disappointing because New Mexico is still one of those States that, uh, that has availability that has amazing places. It's frankly our secret spot. I think more and more people have found out about it in the last few years, but it's it's kind of to me like Arizona without all the people. It has some really wonderful places. It has some, you know, desert scrubland and stuff like that too, which can be fine in its own right, but it has some wonderful places as well. You have the ability to get up into the mountains to get out of the heat, or in the winter, you have the ability to be down in the desert to avoid the cold. It's just a really great state with a lot of biodiversity, and and I love it, and so does uh, the rest of our family. And I think, uh, I think this is just disappointing to see such a huge increase in the cost of that annual pass. But like I said, again, they're one of the only states that actually has an annual pass like that. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if anybody gets it. My fresh tank this week is an article in rvtravel.com. rvtravel.com uh, put out this article. Uh, Russ and Tina Damaris wrote it. Uh, Farmer uses RVers gray and black water to irrigate crops. So in Quarryville, Pennsylvania, there's a Jellystone Park. Jellystone, if you don't know, is a chain of RV parks that are, uh, that are sort of based around the Yogi Bear franchise. Um, Jellystone was the, was the national park that the bears were in, in, uh, in the Yogi Bear series and Jellystone parks are great. They're great, uh, family friendly places. They're, they're, they're often water slides and all sorts of fun stuff. But this Jellystone in Quarryville, Pennsylvania has installed a new wastewater treatment plant that actually allows them to treat the wastewater of all the campsites at the campground that sends it over to the farmer next door to irrigate crops with. Now they don't use it to irrigate crops that are used for human consumption, but they say that the water is treated to the point that it could be sent into the sewer system and that it's perfectly safe water. It says the treatment system uses an environmentally friendly biological treatment process that breaks down the waste, requiring minimal chemicals in the process. After treatment, the clean water is pumped to a large holding tank on the farmer's farm from there they immediately spray it over the fields using a large central pivot irrigation system the system operates like a sprinkler ensuring even water distribution across the crops i think it's really interesting when campgrounds find ways to make our impact on the environment a little bit smaller and incorporate things like solar and wind power and find better ways to deal with wastewater so good on the quarryville pennsylvania Jellystone RV Park. That's it for this week's episode of the RV Miles Podcast. Thanks so much for being here, everybody. Hey, if you haven't got tickets for the homecoming rally coming this October, we hope to see you there in Amana, Iowa. We're going to have a whole lot of fun with lots of friends and 
do a live episode of the podcast and have a cornhole tournament and lots of free food and so much more. Check out all the details in the link in the description. We hope to see you there. Thanks a lot, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Keep logging those RV miles. Bye.